Amen. Amen. So we, we, we're starting something new on possessing your possessions. Tell the person sitting ah. next to you, I will possess my possessions. I will, I will possess, possess my possessions. possessions. Say it again. I will possess my possessions. Say it for the last time. I will possess my possessions. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, you must be in a position. You must put yourself, not physical position anyway, but you must put yourself in a spiritual position where whatever God has planned for you as a Christian, you don't miss it. Because life is short. Even if you're going to live 1,000 years on this earth, it doesn't compare with eternity. Eternity is endless. So whatever God has in store for you must be gotten now. And your opportunities are time-based. What does that mean? It means that if you have an opportunity to get now and you miss it, you may never get it again. So you need to be in a position where you can possess your breakthrough. Where you can possess what you believe God has for you. Mm -hmm. Maybe with you, all your desire this year is to be well because you've been sick for a while. Mm -hmm. Or there's somebody in your home who's been sick for a long while. Maybe yours is that you want an, an employment. You haven't worked for a while. You know, your, your things aren't going the way you expect them to go. You suddenly have an expectation on your heart. There is suddenly a breakthrough that you are expecting to receive from God. And when you come to church and the word is being ministered, you must see yourself in that light. That this is what I want, this is what I need. And the word is coming in this direction, so I must be able to take my blessings, possess what belongs to me. It's important you know who you are in Christ. Outside Christ, we don't mean anything, no. We are, we are just useless outside Christ. Christ is what makes the difference in our lives. And when we, we come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, it's important you understand that you've come to a spiritual position and by that reason, you must be able to get what belongs to you. Colossians chapter 3 Verse 1 to 3. Let me use the Passion Translation. It says, Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too. This is why we are to yearn for all that is above. For that's where Christ is enthroned. At the place of all power, honor, and authority. Yes. Feast on all the treasures of the heavenly realm. And fill your thoughts with heavenly realities. And not with the distractions of the natural realm. Then verse 3, your crucifixion with Christ has severed the tie to this life. It has cut the tie to this life. And now your true life is hidden away in God, in Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say, my crucifixion with Christ. My crucifixion with Christ. With has Christ. severed the tie. Has severed the tie. To this life. To this life. And now. And now. My true life. My true life. Is hidden away. Is hidden away. In God. In God. And in Christ. And in Christ. Let's say it again. Let's go. My crucifixion with Christ. My crucifixion with Christ. Has severed the tie. Has severed the tie to this life. To this life. And now, and now, your true life, your true life, is hidden away. Is hidden away in God. In God. In Christ. Amen. In Christ. Amen. Amen. Now Jesus died not because he did anything wrong, no. And God allowed Jesus to conquer Satan not because God wanted it. God, Satan is already defeated. But God allowed Jesus to conquer Satan for our sakes. Amen. Jesus didn't need to conquer Satan. Satan was already defeated. 
God the Father didn't need to conquer Satan. He was already a defeated foe. Equally, the Holy Spirit didn't need to conquer Satan. Satan was already defeated. He was cast out of heaven. But man lost everything in the garden. So God must come in and give back to us what we lost. If you don't get these fundamental principles about Christianity right, you waste your time. Seriously. Because you will never come to the place of victory or the place of victory or breakthrough. But you no, know, this God allowed Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, to come to this world to paralyze Satan and all his demons. Satan is a paralytic as far as resurrection is concerned. Amen. Hallelujah. He's paralyzed. Completely paralyzed. Satan is defeated. As far as the resurrection is concerned, Satan has been defeated. And God did that, like I'm telling you, not because he needed it. No. Jesus didn't need it. He did that for you and I. That humanity, mankind, will come back to the place of glory. Amen. Bible says in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 that for all have sinned and are in need of the glory of God. When we missed it in the garden through Adam, we lost all of it. We lost our authority and Satan took it away. That's what happened. But God came through Jesus Christ and there is restoration. The resurrection brought about a complete restoration. Amen. And even added more to, to do whatever we lost. So now, Bible says confidently in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 21, for all things are now yours. Is it healing? Is it wisdom? Is it peace of mind? Is it understanding? Is it grace? Is it bonus? All things are yours. It's like you go to the bank, you have this amount in your bank account, 100,000 Ghana cities. And then it's your money that is in your account, it's in your name. And then you go to the bank and you ask the teller, can you take some of the money? And then she will be wondering, are you normal? But then she will tell you, that's your account. Yeah. You are a signatory to that account. All things are, that account belong to you. Yeah. So why are you asking me? Amen. That's the same thing the church is going through. Yeah. The church must come to realize that the resurrection of Jesus Christ totally defeated Satan. Hallelujah. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Hallelujah. Did you hear what I said? Let me say it again because you didn't hear it. I said, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead totally Total. defeated Total. Satan. Total. Thank you, Father. Totally. If anybody in your, in your ancestral home comes to tell you that, well, they've taken you to a shrine, they're going to kill you, they're going to do that, you only have to laugh over it. Because you have been set free. Praise set God. Free. Hallelujah. Say you have been set free. I've been set free. Say it again. I've been set free. I've been set free. When Jesus conquered Satan on the cross, in the grave, and in the hell, he did that work not for himself, but for us. Mm. He didn't need to go to hell. No. He's a creator. All authority belongs to him. He spoke creation into being. He created the angels. Satan is a fallen angel. But God is telling you that what you need to understand is that the resurrection of Christ made the difference in your life. Uh -huh. Don't only think about resurrection on Easter Sunday. You must live your resurrection every passing day. Because you will confront Satan and Satan will engage you in battles every passing 
today. He's going to do that. He's not going to spare you. Hmm. No. But if you don't understand your resurrection authority, then you might think that, yes, on Easter Sunday, we talk about his risen. That is the end of it. Hmm. We'll see the reality of it again at the next time. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. You must constantly be living in the victory of the resurrection. Say, I will constantly live in the victory of the resurrection. I will constantly live in the victory of the resurrection. Say it again. I will constantly live in the victory of the resurrection. You know, for most people, the only time they declare he is risen is on Easter Sunday. But I tell you what, every passing day, Satan will engage you in warfare. Mm. He will try and take something from you. If he can't take from you, he will destroy something about you. Mm. And if he can't destroy, he will kill you. Because he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Mm. But you must live in your resurrection victory. That is what God wants us to understand. When you start walking in your resurrection victory and you are faced with temptations, you can escape from those temptations. When you start working in your resurrection victory, and you are faced with a need in your home, you can pray and believe that God will do it, and God will do it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When you start living in your resurrection victory as a student, you will make the grade. You will pass. That is how your life will go forward in this life. You must pass examinations. Are you hearing me? You may not like school. That is your decision. But in life, you go through a test. Mm. When you pass the test, you go forward. Mm. That's what you have to decide. Mm. So it's important you realize that in class, wherever you find yourself, you will walk in your resurrection authority. Resurrection is not only on Easter Sunday. Tell the person sitting next to you, resurrection is not only on Easter Sunday. Resurrection is not only on Easter Sunday. Resurrection is an every day. Resurrection is an every day. Every day of my life. Every day of my life. I must walk in my resurrection authority. I must, I must walk, walk in my resurrection authority. Let's say it again. Every day of my life. Every, every day, day of, of my, my life. life. I must walk in my resurrection authority. I must, I must walk, walk in, in my, my resurrection, resurrection authority. authority. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 